welcome to the labyrinth i'm your host pratham padho if you would like to support my podcast buy my t-shirt link is in the description and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel my guest today is manish acharya he is a martial artist he has more than a decade of teaching experience in karate and self defense he is specialized in traditional indian and malaysian karate styles and he has a third degree black belt he is the founder of archman skills for life academy through which he teaches martial arts and meditation okay manish uh, welcome to the lab and how are you yeah thank you i am fine uh, pratham thank uh, you for having me in first okay so when did your interest in martial arts uh, begin martial arts uh, since childhood i was uh, very much interested in martial arts because uh, i think all of us uh, grew up watching bruce lee movies and his uh, shaolin kung fu movies so f- from a small age usually boys always they have this uh, tendency to like fight and all that so i was always looking for learning karate at that time luckily we had karate in our school so i started when i was in uh, third standard somewhere in 1996 so that was a uh, beginning uh, i was 8 years old so <laughs> very what you say like our school days was very active and uh, uh, we we were involved in lot of activities that time in the school itself so karate was uh, one of the things that they started and that that day was like uh, you know a dream come true for us it was the first day was really awesome like <laughs> how has your journey been with karate from high school to now you know teaching karate uh it's been a very experiential one like uh, uh, there is constant learning process there uh i always wanted like everyone you know everyone's dream is to have a black belt and uh, you know become a sensei or that so when we when we saw our instructors it 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 motivated us like we also want to be like him because uh my father was working abroad uh, in saudi arabia so we didn't i didn't have that male uh, interaction kind of thing or a father figure who, who supported or you know uh he did support uh, me in all aspects of my life but then you know physically being present is something different than so for me it was like uh, my first sensei uh, shian uh, chandra sanchan so he he was like a mentor to me or like a father figure to me at that point of time so whatever our achievements was or like whatever our fears you know as a kid everyone will have that uh, fear or uh, something they want to share with their father only you know that kind of thing so he was my uh, mentor and father figure so that's what so and uh, yeah from high school i was very passionate about karate so even after the classes when we go back home we used to you know try the chop uh, and whatever moves we, we learned we used to try it not on others but uh, on the plants or uh, something like that uh, on the way back from school uh, you, you know this uh, communist gida this you know parthenium plant Oh, so yeah. it, it has a very soft tip of uh, leaves so we, i used to try the chops on those plants and uh, like in one shot you have to cut off the kind of thing so like that from high school it was very good like we had a uh, enough number of competitions we had competitive spirit between our classmates and all that uh, then like <laughs> after it went to puc it's like you know our as i said earlier our school was like full action packed like our principal uh, kept us busy in everything like cultural or sports or anything so there we were fully active in, in all rounds of uh, life like uh, you take dancing fancy dress or anything like we were kept full on busy so karate was a part of that and then uh, the best part was like we had to choose like you you have to take either craft or karate so most of the boys took karate and uh, some of the girls uh, who were interested they took karate so and from there puc was like i joined uh, 
Alwas College. So I was in hostel for two years. Uh, there, uh, yeah, the sports interest is there, but in PUC and degree, the karate is not being taught till now. So they are not included it as a curriculum or something. So once you finished your 10th standard, it's like only study, study, study. You know, you're like a horse uh, who's been uh, tied up and you have to focus on only on studies. And I guess, you know, like Dakshina Kannada and Udupi district is good for studies only. And very less. There are uh, good talents who have proven themselves in the international platform also. But then in a larger scale, if you see the sports or, uh, you know, other art forms have not been recognized that much after PUC and uh, uh, the university. So, yeah, PUC, I used to practice on my own. Then I joined engineering in St. Joseph, Wamanju. Uh, so there was like a five years break for me from karate, like learning karate with the sensei. So I was practicing on my own. and uh, But I was in touch with my instructors. Uh, there was not like, you know, proper training kind of thing. So I was training on myself. And uh, somewhere in second year or third year engineering, I came across the same karate class, but a different instructor. Uh, it was uh, Shihan uh, Surendra B. So I joined the same Indian karate style in Mangalore. I continued it here. And then I got my black belt in uh, 2010. So th then everyone like my sir and even Surendra sir is like a very uh, fatherly figure for me. Uh, he's been very supportive and uh, whatever ideas I have, he, he's, he always supports me with that. So he said like, okay, Manish, you are good in teaching. You know, uh, you know the basics very well. So I think you can teach. So he always pushed me to teach. But then uh, after engineering, I started work. And it's like, you know, you are just uh, put in a factory kind of uh, uh, what you say. Uh, you're just busy doing yeah your job and you know taking care of the responsibilities you don't find time for the passion but every weekends i used to go to the class without fail and uh, that's how it went but uh, teaching was like uh, i was not at ready for that because one main reason was to find a time frame from the work uh, so that was a bit difficult part so somewhere in 2014 i started a class doing some adjustment in my office uh, in uh, Kankanadi uh, with the, along with the dance class. So weekly three days I was taking class there. Uh, but then I had night shifts uh, that time. So handling the class was a bit difficult. And one more thing was like, uh, uh, I thought I was not good in marketing. So I didn't have enough students. But then as time passed, I realized like it was not about marketing, but it was somewhere that I was lacking uh, something in me before being a sensei because being a teacher is like a very responsible job. You cannot take it easy because you're somewhere building the student's future. You know, you're, you're building the base and it should be really strong because we had a really strong base uh, when our sensei taught us. Uh, the, we, we were given most importance to the basics, but now somewhere you know, people are skipping the basics, like it has become like, you know, copy paste kind of thing. You get everything in internet. So you just copy paste and you think you know thing. But when it comes to art, you can never go just by the theories. You have to be very practical about it. So again, I, I stopped classes. Then my brother, uh, uh, Nitesh, I think you already had a podcast with him. So he continued uh, Monkey Man Fight Club. And uh, he is fully into martial arts. So he's a lucky guy. and He is very passionate about it, very supportive. So even when I was taking karate classes, he, he was very supportive for me because sometimes if I was not, uh, you know, uh, motivated enough, so he used to push me hard there. And uh, somehow, but then uh, I couldn't manage, you know, uh, balance things with uh, work and uh, karate. And also like, when it comes to teaching, I, I think I was not that ready. So I took a break there and I asked him to continue that. But then now, yeah, I, I, I started exploring different martial arts. I started uh, meeting different karate masters. So after, you know, training with them, uh, I somewhat felt confident. So now in last, last year, I just started uh, 
the Achman skills for life. And uh, first thing I started is a karate dojo, and uh, it's going good now. So okay. that's the uh, story. What what is behind the name Achman skills? What does Achman mean? <clears throat> okay, Achman. Uh, first thing is like it's a name given to me by one of my uh, spiritual mentors, like one of my very close friend. and he's also a spiritual guide to me and uh, he 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 was uh, he's a ex uh, uh, navy uh, person so uh, he he was the one who gave this name to me and uh, basically it's uh, achman like in 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 sanskrit there is a word called achaman you might have heard of it like uh, there is a ritual where uh, the brahmins they, they take uh, three times uh, the water one time they drop it so it's 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 basically this is uh, what some sort of purification so uh, it's somewhere derived from that and uh, that is one deeper meaning so what we are going through is like all the youngsters and uh, everyone is going through a lot of stress these days so i thought okay we have to uh, bring up come up with a solution so everyone is coming up with some of the other solutions like there's yoga there dance there's zumba and everything so i thought okay how i can contribute to this so my skill set was karate and uh, self defense uh, and yeah along with that i had uh, when i was in uh, after my engineering i had to i got a chance to learn pranic healing which is a uh, energy healing uh, module or like it's it's a uh, uh, what you say like you might have heard of reiki yeah i heard of it yeah so it is uh, similar to, uh, it is slightly advanced from reiki where this is a no touch no drug therapy so just like how we have this physical body we also have a energy body of of its own so that is working in its own this one so i got to learn about this uh, uh, pranic healing so i fused all these things together and i formed achman skills for life where people you know uh, where we do is like uh, mind body and spirit integration kind of thing so keeping these things in balance is the uh, main goal there so But, that we can uh, handle life easily uh, one thing uh, i find very interesting is that so many people who are interested in martial arts and physical fitness are also into spirituality why do you think so many people who are into physical fitness are also into spirituality uh it's like a, what you say like it, it is a part of the martial art thing like uh, the physical training whatever you take like any mm-hmm. art like especially martial arts uh, it's like when you uh, what you say exert your body when you do exercises when you do particular form of uh, martial arts for a long duration of time uh, you know it or you don't know it somewhere you know your your physical body is obviously changing but then at the same time your your other aspects which which is not uh, you know easily available or uh, which which people have not realized it like uh, just like i said now we have a physical body so we have uh, Uh, energy body also now in this energy body there is like lot of layers okay so most of the people we know uh, mental strength we talk about emotional strength and about uh, physical strength but then after that there are more layers like there is a spiritual aspect in the sense like that is the last thing but there, there is astral body then there is a uh, etheric body and then there are a lot of other layers so we will not go much detail into that but when you train physically so these things are like closely tied up you cannot say like your physical body is different your energy body it's not like that so people believe it or not when you train physically you you see physical changes you see mental changes you see emotional changes at the same time there is changes happening in the energy body also so when a martial artist train you, you might have seen me like they become more aware like they are conscious about uh, their surrounding now for for taking my example uh, you may not believe if i say i have been practicing like i didn't know the spiritual side of this okay but i just uh, blindly practice what my instructors or my sensei told me and uh, what i observed is like till now nobody ragged me 
even being uh, short size and all these things in, in the entire school life or college life or anywhere nobody ragged me or like you know uh, made fun or try to trouble me so i was thinking like okay i am actually a easy target for anyone like when a huge or bulky person is trying to wants to rag i am actually a easy target but then i was thinking why uh, like there were a lot of questions like this but then when i uh, learned pranic healing i found all the answers for all all of these things so what i found out is when when you do physical uh, uh, like practices like martial art or qigong or kung fu or taekwondo or muay thai or anything you you like it or not the spiritual development is happening but how long that depends on the person how much he is practicing so later i come to know like i took my black belt certificate and everything but in the certificate it's clearly written uh, so and so person has been awarded uh, so and so uh, dan or black belt uh, and he has completed all the required physical mental and spiritual requirements of of the karate do so that's when i'm like okay this so otherwise if you say spirituality Uh, what comes to our mind is like some sadhu you are closing your eyes and meditating on that but that's not all about it spirituality is like in everything like if you have seen uh, uh, the karate kid movie of yeah. jackie chan or the, the one where uh, miyagi sensei is there so they say like kung fu or karate is is not in only punching or kicking it's in how how you treat people how you do your work so somewhere without knowledge i i trained like that and i never knew this or like uh, most of the masters also don't know this but but this thing is happening by itself like you know or not the spiritual development happens there okay that's so very that's really fine the uh, martial artists they are into too much philosophical things as they practice uh, for a long time yeah that's very interesting even uh, someone like bruce lee is, is, uh, when you watch his movies he'll say some philosophical oh, yeah. lines one liner <laughs> it's very interesting yeah, yeah. <laughs> can that, you that's the key uh, of uh, training martial arts like martial art is that's why they call it is as a way of life not just uh, tournament yeah it it becomes a lifestyle uh, yes. now in uh, karate classes usually kids come and join let's say someone yeah. who's an adult who's in his late 20s or 30s suddenly their interest yeah. first they might be interested only for practical reasons for fitness or self defense yeah. then later they may yeah. say hey, even i want to pursue a black belt is it uh, yeah. practical for them oh yes that age is just a number all all you need is like the will power and and the interest that's all and there there is no so we when we uh, take in students we take students from 6 years and above uh, because you know kids lower the, below 6 years they, they they tend to be very hyperactive and it's their time to what you say like you know enjoy life so you don't want to put them in a strict discipline or like that because karate is like a, you know very disciplined kind of thing you need to stand straight and try to listen to your sensei all the time and uh, it might seem very boring at times but then what is happening is like each and every count or each and every second that that you listen to your sensei somewhere some aspect in you is being developed without your knowledge so all you need to do is follow and uh, here one important thing is like you should see who the sensei is or how much uh, uh, you know the how much uh, depth he has in the understanding or or the basics of karate or the discipline of karate I, i like to say so it depends on instructor like you might have heard this line from the karate kid like there's no bad student there's only bad teacher always so that one point is very important like when you choose a dojo or any martial art you need to check that aspect you cannot uh, you know come to a conclusion maybe you might take some trial classes and then only you get to know but 6 uh, years and above yeah you you can you know make them to stand in line and all that but some kids are like you know like some passionate kids like me like from young age who is interested they will listen and they will follow things and and that age is uh, yeah as you ask like see for adults what happens is uh, grasping things is little bit difficult because they are uh, what you say like most of the adults they come to you know 
get relieved from the stress that's why they're hitting the gyms or karate or anything because they're caught up in a lot of things but for kids it's not like that they're like their mind is open for anything so they they learn things faster for adults that is a bit uh, uh, what you say that that is a obstacle kind of thing so they have to work on it like but then yeah uh, as as they start initially that's what they'll come like a stress buster thing but then later slowly when they get to know deeper understanding they will continue it so they can achieve the blessing uh, we have one uh, church father father clifford uh, who came continuously six years like they are actually not allowed to uh, practice this kind of things and and he is he, he has a lot of responsibility in his uh, church thing but he did some adjustment he was very passionate about karate so he joined somewhere in his uh, 40s so maybe 38 40 something he joined for 6 years he came and he achieved his black belt so that's the interest like if you have the interest age is just a number you, you can you can achieve anything is this a uh, father for learning is this father clifford sequera by any sense yes yes clifford oh. fernandes fernandes okay okay fine yes he is right now he is uh, in uh, kulshekar parish i guess okay okay yeah. uh can you tell me a little bit more about indian style of karate or malaysian style of karate in which you are specialized and how it is different from other style okay like yeah yeah i started uh, indian karate the full name is self defense school of indian karate and mm-hmm. our grandmaster is pm narsimhan so like when 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 the bruce lee this thing and all picked up more like the bruce lee movies people wanted to learn karate but before that if you see in india uh, there was regional specific martial arts so if you say south india there was kalari pad so that was the only thing you could learn like or the garadi mane thing or kushti you know these were the only thing so kalari is like a very vast uh, what you can say is like it's, it's a like a big university there are a lot of different uh, uh, you know branches in that now if 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 you go back to the history like in kalari uh, like hanuman and uh, wali and uh, there are different people like in the vanar sena if you have heard so each person's fighting style is different so maybe uh, someone is doing jujutsu there someone is doing judo there so that that was their strength so kalari is all about this and uh, in india there was south india it was kalari and north india there were different like uh, sanastana shastra shastra vidya or something so the six or the kalsa people they had different so but then it's like as you know it's like kingdoms were there so each kingdom had their own fighting strategies uh, so kalari is the most ancient and you, you, uh, it's called as mother of all martial arts because for a fighting uh, like everyone used to fight like there is fight between two tribes or you know different things but kalari you can say it's the most scientific or like you know the guruji is there they develop particular techniques for the kings or for warfare combat technique so uh, i am lucky to have learned this from uh, the bm narsimhan master he formed his his own uh, style uh, initially the japanese masters came to india and they wanted to give affiliations and say like okay you start this style so the first person they came to is bm narsimhan so and he said he, he is a very say like passionate guy he is a very uh, patriot guy so he didn't want to do japanese thing Uh, but then slowly he saw like you know the, the people started liking color, uh, karate more and the fond of for uh, the interest for color is slightly reduced so he was upset with this so what he he spoke to his guru uh, asan keshavan so he said why not you start a indian form of karate so that's when he started as south indian self defense school of indian karate okay and he uh, gave techniques from kalari and judo so that's how i learned indian karate so indian karate is more of like a traditional thing like uh, it's very hard training the more more uh, uh, this thing is uh, the more importance is given to your physical aspects like your flexibility stretching and uh, this one. and and there is a more what you say like cultural values are installed instilled uh, in a student in the indian form so uh, as you know like in india it's like guru is greater than god for us like the kabir das ka doha if you see so here it's like more uh, imp- 
importance is given to the instructors and masters and all our masters so this this keeps the you know your spiritual growth is faster in when you do a traditional form of martial art whereas malaysia is like uh, they also like the grandmasters okay clemenso so he he he's also like in their time it was the same like they also learned the cultural values but it was a japanese culture what they learned and uh, but now it is more of a sport oriented kind of thing so they, they the training is like short duration 3 months you train hard 6 uh, months by 6 months you are ready for tournament but then in indian karate it's not the same thing it's like until and unless the master says you are ready you, you never step into a ring so that's the difference so they the, uh, and uh, the indian form is still you know it's still very grounded so they they are not uh, much uh, uh, upgraded along with the present scenario but then it's it's i can say the difference is like uh, more of spiritual training in indian karate more of professional and uh, you know uh, sport oriented training in malaysian style okay. uh now i'll go slightly off topic i'll go in a different okay. direction when i say the words uh, natural rights what comes to your mind oh <laughs> natural rights uh it's it's like uh it's like we have been kind of trapped in a you know some kind of uh, system which which is not Uh, where you 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 are not allowed to use your natural rights uh, rights so when it comes to natural rights uh, rights it's like each individual or each being as uh, the universe has given him certain rights like he can do this or he cannot do this it, it should be you know uh, left to the individual not not some second person or third person deciding for you what what you want to do what you are supposed to do or what not uh natural rights is like uh, you should be allowed to choose what, what what food you want to eat or like whatever you want to put inside this body that that you own uh yeah that's what comes to my mind when when you say natural rights uh, right now in uh, the current uh, scenario what do you think are the biggest threats to natural rights Uh, i think everything is under a threat right now <laughs> so, uh, with, with all this covid thing happening i th- think uh, it's it's a big game being played up on humanity uh the entire corona like i i did some i do have some friends uh, with whom i discuss about these things and uh, like i had interest like you know when when we as you said like when, when we practice martial arts and we are into spirituality so you you don't see things as it is you you try to see what is a deep what is hiding behind that so like now if you see in, in our mythology that there is ganesha there is shiva there are different forms but then that is not they may not be practical like if you think now but but then if you go behind it there is a message hidden or a science hidden behind it which you need to decipher or something like that so the names you hear now also is like you know the corona virus or like corona is nothing but like a crown so what my individual opinion is like they have just put a topi on every <laughs> human feet in there and they're doing making up some story and uh, uh, you know make people believe these things and follow certain things which which shouldn't be done which is really bad it shouldn't happen so yeah. that's the thing uh, how were you affected during the past two years with the log- with lockdowns and with the mandates that are happening oh it's it's a horrible thing like uh, one thing is like you you're locked locked down like you're not supposed to go out uh, it's like every person uh, needs to be out like he needs to go out and be with the nature meet people and, and all these things are closed and uh, on the tv you are just made to listen corona kk that this and all it's, it's it's really bad and working from home is like the most horrible thing for anyone but most of them have made good use of it and uh, for most of them it's not good for for me it was not good actually uh, the thing is like 
it's it's very difficult to come out of this thing right now you are so used to that now working at home and you find it difficult to step out like they you have been made to uh, adjust to you know your comfort zone so it's really bad like and the atman skills was supposed to start actually <laughs> before uh, you know in somewhere in 2020 but because of this everything is postponed i should have been teaching self defense to people in the colleges and all that but because of this it's been a huge loss for us yeah same year even i couldn't work from home. i used to work till last year for a company yeah. but then uh, first few months were okay but then in the end work from yeah. home became so irritating not because of too much work i felt like a caged animal inside my own room i had okay. to quit i went a little crazy during that time <laughs> and yeah even i i went through the same thing and then uh, my father uh, left the body last year so after that it was like i got psyched out because uh, he used to like you know we used to always have conversations like even if it is the smallest thing or the most serious or the most complicated thing we used to have a lot of conversations being at home even if in i was office he used to keep calling and we used to discuss a lot of things uh that part somewhere went missing and i i was sitting at home and there's no sound there's no father calling me and all that so it was like very horrible time so i just had to i i packed my office uh, desktop and i went to bangalore and i stayed with one of the karate guys so i practiced karate and yoga with him for like 15 to 18 days then i came back so i i, I had a tough time with that so and uh, uh, would yeah. you say that karate and martial arts has uh, helped you mentally get rid of some stress and some bad things also oh, definitely today if, like see in life everyone goes through a lot of things okay so uh, if it was not for karate i don't think i would have gone psyched out and maybe i would have even you know gone for suicide or something like that but what karate does to one is like you know it it, it it builds you inside out but the thing is you, you have to practice it that much because the high school practice like from third standard to 10th standard that seven years we practiced like mad people like crazy as practice we did uh, but we didn't know like somewhere we are training for that but what i say is for all youngsters like in, in high school like from your first standard to 10th standard it's very important that that you know the parents or the school or everyone is strict with you and you learn uh, your daily learn to do your daily course so in our school what what happened like we i would like to thank my principal uh, mrs uh, geeta venkatraman she was a very strict lady and she made us do everything like we were supposed to sweep and uh, mop our class also and uh, sometimes some extreme punishments we even had to clean our toilets but back then we were like what what stupid school is this why why we have to do all these thing there are people for that and all but now like after when i went to uh, hostel and when i went to uh, george uh, like uh, when i continued my degree and now when i'm seeing my life it's like oh god thanks like we had we did all that and we 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 really that these things are very important in life so nowadays what's happening i see you know uh, even like the, the karate class like we used to get like punished like heavily like but we didn't take that punishment as punishment we took it as like a challenge like in karate if we did something wrong sir used to give like 100 side sit ups 200 side sit ups or 50 push ups or something like that but then our sensei told don't take it as a you know insult or something take it as a challenge take it as a lesson and move forward but these teachings what we got that time it's really helpful for us so even with this covid thing you know there's a lot of horrible things happening so we are able to keep ourselves together and somewhere yeah you know fight against it yeah. so definitely karate is has it's it's it's, it's uh, you know uh, you can diff, you can take my name out of me but you cannot take karate out of me <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you definitely treat your body as a temple you are very careful about yes, what you yes. put in your body 
so another thing uh, about this whole covid uh, circus that is happening is uh, vaccine mandates in places like malls and theaters uh, what do you think about this that's a uh, bullshit totally bullshit it is it's, it's it's not not something uh, you know th- th- this is a big game that's happening like they want people to be enslaved and we shouldn't give give up uh, for this like we shouldn't fall for this the whole whole corona thing is it's like a game like see you don't need to know science or this thing like let's just take the basics okay like everybody knows like your body is made of five elements like uh, what you say in kannada panchabhuta gal so it's like your air water fire uh, earth and space so let's let's see how they have you know uh, broken down the people's thinking uh, air like they said okay this virus is there you have to wear a mask and all those things but everybody knows like your your life force is nothing but prana but breath like if someone is dead they say avana prana hoitu what it, what does it mean like his uh, breath is gone like he is not breathing anymore so th- when you are wearing a mask you are obstructing the life force okay if you are having some infection and if, if it spreads like if you are having cough cold then fine you have to restrict yourself and not not you know uh, the saliva or the, the sneeze should not touch others then yes you have to cover yourself but this is like horrible i see people outside like you know they are not bothered to wear helmets but they are wearing mask too too much that's the <laughs> most horrible thing that's the most horrible thing like you see the mental uh, what you say like uh, uh, the you know they they they, they are uh, poisoning the minds like so so you you see you wear mask you have less oxygen Uh, you are not breathing out all the carbon dioxide this is the basics of life you don't need to have any phd to understand this so you are you are wearing mask you are obstructing oxygen you don't have enough oxygen supply so let's understand heart is not the main organ in the body lungs are because what is happening heart is pushing the uh, blood to the lungs and you are getting oxygenated uh, uh, blood there and then it is pumped back to all the this one so you are not having sufficient oxygen in your lungs what what do you expect then respiratory disorders are only the, what is going to happen people are not understanding this you are obstructing your, the precious life force and you you yourself are you know spoiling your lungs so your air element is gone then uh, let's go for water uh, you 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 have been locked down in the house you you become very lazy you're not exercising you're not sweating enough you're not drinking enough water 70 to 80% of the body is water so when you don't go out in the sunlight you don't sweat obviously naturally you don't feel like you know drinking water so the water element also is screwed there then you have uh, the fire uh, every person needs to be uh, be under direct sunlight for minimum 20 minutes every day so they lock you down you are inside the house no sunlight when you when you don't have enough fire element what you eat also is not digested properly so you need to exercise and do that so your fire element is good then comes sir now they are locked down your shops are closed you don't have enough uh, people don't have enough uh, money to buy nutritious food so earth is nothing but what you eat which whatever we eat is from the earth right yeah so that is good when all these four elements are screwed where is peace in your life <laughs> your mind is fucked up totally there is no peace there so your space element is screwed so, so the, these five elements are totally gone we are screwing ourselves not someone else this and is this is very basic thing you don't need to you know no rocket science for this and these five so elements the, that you explained it's just common sense but some people will yes, say oh you don't you're then it yes to know that it's it's very common from old traditions like we know like panchabhuta galu we have all heard all this uh, like you cannot stick it to any religion or something you take any really this, this is human science problem is we are not being taught these things in the schools we we are still in a british mindset education system which is just creating slaves like i did okay i did pc engineering but then life is missing that's why i have to create atman skills so that i teach these things to people yeah otherwise why is that required the school the education system needs to change it needs a lot of changes these basics like the inner science is is totally missing 
even, it's not there at all yeah even if uh, there are people who will say no no you shouldn't uh, make up your own opinions you have to listen to the experts the experts have been proven wrong so many times they were wrong on lockdowns they were wrong on pcr tests they were wrong on so many things even uh, even they're not even bothering to talk about the side effects like heart attacks I like blood this, clots but you know what when, when when people say this to me like when someone comes up with this argument i ask them tell me one expert who is a virologist from 2 years we have been hearing experts 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 tell me one virologist name and they don't have a name yeah. if 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 i see properly in the news we are seeing we are seeing people who are cardiologists who are physicians all are talking about corona but it is a virus and we need some virologist to speak about it we never saw like in general i never heard anyone like if you ask anyone you tell one virologist name nobody knows people knows of different doctors name who are talking some uh, some doctors now are talking even here in bangalore there is doctors like shrinivas takila even in bangalore there are banu prakash few doctors are yeah, slowly the, opening the up the doctors you no know, see again when you say doctors there are two things like you like i said like uh, in karate also you go to some institute you you pay money you do some crash course and you get certificate you are a certified karate guy okay but what about your your uh, understanding of the basics mm. like i said that time you need to there is no bad student there is only bad teacher so how much see so in doctors also just a mbba pass out and a person who is practicing there, there's a lot of difference between experience so before like uh, uh, when i was in uh, primary or in school days uh, the doctors if you see they used to recommend home remedies along with the medicines i have seen doctors like that uh, but nowadays we don't see that so i don't blame doctors for that as i said the education system needs to change there should be a lot of practical understanding of of the subjects that has been taught but that is missing only theory is taught and based on theory okay some people are passionate they will learn and uh, you know i think other day i saw devi shetty narayan hridaya speaking on this topic so he was saying like the medical fees is like in lakhs and crores so how how do you expect a passionate person to join that something course like you know there are reg- uh, students from very regional areas poor backgrounds who want to do something for humanity but he is not getting a chance to learn medical so how do you expect to have you know doctors with real experience or like with real passion who want to treat people and if they spend so much money they will want all to make a lot of yeah, money well, as well return on investment see, anyone is they they'll be behind recovering or paying back the loan nobody is uh, rich enough like only ambani or their kids will have enough money to pay everything in one shot and learn obviously all others are you know taking loan and earning so they want to pay the loans back so it's it's like we are stuck in a very vicious cycle that's why it's the really ex- that's why the experts keep their mouth shut as long as they are getting their <laughs> uh, salary why will they question uh, that is also there but mm-hmm. then they, they are morally or like you know they are somewhere uh, cheating themselves or like they are not being you know what you say they are going against the professional ethics Yeah. so you, you have learned something you, you where you are supposed to save lives not not to you know just pay loans and sit quiet exactly i i hope this comes this will come to an end anyways okay now they are anyways taking oh, people, people are realizing things now people are not giving a damn about what what the government does only thing is like uh, the way they need to retaliate is like you know they they are not doing it in a right way uh, people have understood this is all uh, it's not real and uh, they, they are just continuing their lives uh, if you go and ask them nobody talks about it they, they, they are just like uh, we'll see what will happen let you know they they are opening their shops and doing all those things but somewhere they need to be educated little bit about the vaccine mandates what are the adverse effects of it uh, what contents are there in it like it, it's not being told to the person who is injected like they, it's their duty mm-hmm. and uh, the vaccine uh, the uh, companies that have product uh, produce the vaccine itself are not taking guarantee for their product yes. the government is not taking guarantee the court is not taking guarantee but these local authorities are pushing that that's really stupid actually yes. it's not supposed to be that way 
that's why that's why i tell people you know from once like uh, we have to fight against these local authorities whether we win or lose is separate we have to go and fight no, they cannot we, uh, they can, we cannot lose pratham because see the problem is like when when we fight like if we as a individual they cannot do anything to you because i had gone through this experience like in in our flat uh, one of the neighboring flats one person came out positive so they came and they're like you have to test like the first floor second floor third floor everyone has to test so i said no i don't want to test you cannot force me to test so the first the asha karyakarta came so i told her see i have the rti which says uh, this is from government of india you cannot test uh, without my consent i don't give my consent for testing you cannot force this then she went back uh, then another person from uh, the city corporation comes is like uh, he was i i knew that guy before it's like uh, he is in charge of malaria and all those things so he came and he said i told the same thing to him i said see this is rti from government of india and you cannot uh, overcome this and i have my rights you cannot you can I, i don't give my consent for testing so he called some nodal officer and i told that guy also same thing but then you you see the worst part is the lab technician who came for testing he is talking more arrogantly than these people who are you know they, these are authorities or like they are recognized but the lab guy is like uh, you know this you, you are not uh, from uh, helping you are, you are, it will spread it will do that it will. i said see bro you do your work i am not obstructing you from doing your work whoever wants to do the test you get them tested so what what, what issue you have i know how to manage my body if tomorrow something happens to it is my responsibility i am not going to blame you so you you cannot force me for this i i have my rights my body my rights and the government the supreme court and uh, uh, you know the ministry of health everyone is saying that you have your rights and why are you forcing me to do the test so it's like no we, we have orders from a, yeah orders are for you to do the test not for me to take the test you can the dc or anyone cannot give an order to uh, what i am going to inject to my body or what what uh, test i should take or not that should be my consent without my consent you cannot do that because this is my body you don't own my body exactly nobody owns our body <laughs> exactly not that is DC, not anyone some some 10 people sitting in some ac room and doing some rules you i i don't have any contract with you i don't there's no deal between you and me that i follow everything what you say they cannot push us like that so as individually if everyone knows this they can fight it the, the, the government or to hell with anyone nobody can do anything yeah this is the essence of natural rights i think my earlier yes. question got full answer right now that we <laughs> own our own <laughs> we own our own body yes. no one else owns our yes. body yes. when yes. we talk like this so many people get surprised when i tell them you know it's testing is not compulsory getting this is yes. a vaccine is not compulsory they said but asha karya karta is saying i'm i'm telling them they no, cannot no, no. make the rules that's what i tell them no you, i'll tell you one more thing if they come with some order read the order properly the order he cannot give an order to test or to inject something nobody has the right not dc not anyone if you read the order properly it's it's like very manipulative kind of order they will come with the order but if you read the order is for them to work not for you to take they cannot give an order like that How? nobody can give an order like that even if you see now the order of mandates on uh, this one what is it the malls are everywhere if you read the order properly it will be for them to check or to guide or to like uh, in what my wife's office they uh, she got an order like saying uh, uh yeah, what is that those those who have taken first dose those who have taken second dose you, you are supposed to give the report of that and those who have not taken the first or second dose you have to guide them and uh, ask them to go to the nearest health center you have been ordered to guide them they cannot you they cannot say like we order you to make 100% they can never pass such order this thing people need to understand so this is where we 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 are stronger because if people are there these officials are there because they are our representatives they are not kings they work for us we gave this responsibility to them to work for us yeah. this mindset has to change and each and every individual when they understand this 
things will change for obvious i think many of these uh, government bureaucrats have forgotten that they get their salary from our tax money exactly exactly like and if you see uh, they, they they are misusing the money a lot like let's take one simple example if you take uh, like when you purchase a four wheeler you are paying up to 1 lakh road tax okay so just take okay we have an rto in uh, near uh, aramaitan just just calculate uh, every day how many cars are registered there let's say minimum 20 okay just four wheeler i'm not counting two wheelers and so for 20 vehicles how much is it 20 lakhs per day how much is it for seven days i mean for uh, for one week how much for one month how much for one year how much it is this is just we are calculating for four wheeler now if you take auto rickshaw the the lorry is there bus is there that tax is very now how much money is going there and even after that we have to pay toll there for a yeah. road which is which doesn't have a service road which mm-hmm. doesn't have proper water channels which doesn't have toilet which doesn't have there's, there's no nothing even if they use 50% of that money they can give better things but what is happening is they are eating 90% of it and only 10% work is done there so you cannot blame the mlmt everyone is involved from the bottom till the top yeah. everyone have their share that's and th- that's where they are like you know the day people realize this and start questioning that's when things will change from local level it has to start yeah i i think most people are asleep in their own uh, busy in their own life they don't question anything no, wait, wait wait happening. what what do you think we can do to awaken more people it's a really difficult work like on we can go like we can awaken one person and then you know he has to awaken because uh, you know that the media and everything is been caught all by the rich people so it's no no not easy to you know bring a mass change so only thing we can do is we live like that and then you know someone sees us and only that way the change can come is what i feel but we can educate people more and the more they understand and the problem is what is happening is like uh, the basic essentials is been put at stake for everyone okay so for for uh, what happens is like the basic necessities uh, when you put a blockage to that people will not think about rules and all these things what they want is like they want food for that day or they want money for that day because their kids are going to school when these things are stick but but then when people realize their actual rights they will the entire system will turn upside down but it's a very long process but but what we we you are really doing a great work like we are educating people about these things and uh, yeah we we have to it, it's it's difficult but it's not impossible we, we can still do it definitely so what are uh, manish what are your future plans my future plans right now that's what i'm through achman skills i'm trying to educate my students and those who come in contact with me about these things about about the basics of life because uh, if the person understands the basics like how we discovered uh, discussed about the five elements if that thing people understand then you know slowly things will change but but somewhere you know sometime you need to be very careful when you tell them also because they have been brainwashed to certain things and they don't want even to try things so uh, even when my students or anyone i always ask them not to believe what i say because this is what i learned from my masters so if i say something if i tell something try it out so they have to try then only they if they see the results it's good for you keep it otherwise leave it that's how that's how i want to you know uh, teach people so my aim is to build achman skills bigger and enlighten more people in martial arts and uh, uh, to pranic healing to meditation and all that like spiritual health. so mind body spirit integration so this is what i am trying to do because unless phys- physically you work out your mind doesn't work because your they say the empty mind is a devil's workshop so when you physically exert yourself your mind is more open to more things so through physical training 
i want to develop the minds and and also the awareness of all other bodies that we have then things because there are lot of things which has been hidden from us and there is there are no sufficient tools to understand these subtle things like if you say uh, i would like to say the uh, issue about the sabarimala temple like uh, the argument which uh, j sai deepak advocate who fought for that he said it very clearly but the problem is these subtle things there is no tools for people to understand subtle things like now it is a age where you know if you don't see some results in a print out you they don't believe it they'll just reject it okay now the same thing what we discussed like about the five elements unless there is a study done and so many percentage people were like this like that if you show paperwork only people will believe but that should not be the case where was paperwork earlier when our grandfathers and all they they, they learned things from experience so i am trying to change people to learn from experience than you know being a bookworm or something you should have education you should you should know things theory everything is good but at the same time like as bruce lee says it's not enough just to learn you, you should you should apply okay. so we, we need to apply things look the covid thing also i am confident because i applied it on those people that's how i know what what my rights are i was thinking okay next day the cops might come and all that i called all my friends and lawyers i asked them what to do what to do but then nobody came that's when i realized like what is the natural rights the person has nobody can you know push you against it yeah and that's uh, what yeah and finally i want to ask uh, what do you think is the purpose of life ah this <laughs> <laughs> is one difficult question <laughs> purpose of life is uh, it depends from from individual to individual but as per my understanding i think it's 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 to you know just uh, uh, you know do karma and uh, within the boundaries of dharma okay so when i say dharma it's it's not religion dharma is nothing but a righteous way of living as long as you, you are living happily and you are not uh, you know causing any trouble to others it's fine so everyone everyone should every uh yeah uh, everyone should learn from uh, karma and uh, also learn from dharma yeah so every everyone has to keep learning and you know explore their maximum potential like the inner science there is a lot of thing that is missing so i think uh, for now i can say the life purpose should be to understanding the basics of life like how how you body is working how your mind is working how your emotion is working when you understand this everything else is can be handled very easily yeah this so is so be yeah. you know learning inwards and uh, giving things outwards <laughs> yeah there's a lot to learn i guess even in spiritual fields understanding myself there, yes. there is so much more See, to learn you, 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 there are a lot of paths which you can take it's it's not necessarily you know martial arts only but martial arts helps because I, as i said like when, only when physical conditioning happens the mind gets cleared like whatever obstacles you have or the unwanted things that is the stress or whatever it gets kicked out and then you have clarity that that's the best part about martial arts but uh, you you need not do martial arts only you can apply the same concept to any like if you can ex- apply it to any sport be it basketball football or anything it works everywhere it's not a lesson for martial artist only it's it's, it's a way of life it, it, uh, the way of life can be done using any art be it music or uh, uh, instruments or any any art you can take this was a very educational uh, conversation thank you manish for yes. coming on my podcast <laughs> no thank you so much i think uh, this is the first time i'm doing this interview kind of thing and it's it's really nice to discuss things like i cannot discuss all these things in one shot with my students i i give them part by part but i always wanted to talk about this with others so thank you so much for having me mm-hmm.